Hi, how's it going, everyone? It's Nathan here, aka the Rambling Kern, and head instructor of Kern School of Combat. So, I recently shared a picture by a wonderful, um, very talented artist uh, by the name of O'Sully Doodle, uh, which I'll show on screen here for you. Um, and got a few people asking about the picture itself, so I kind of jokingly said, I really need to get myself a uh, parry gauntlet. And what you'll notice in this picture is on this gentleman's arm, he's wearing uh, a singular gauntlet. He's not wearing it on the other side. Now, this is something that we see appear um, in artwork of Irish Kearns quite a few times, actually. Um, and to me, I think it's quite fascinating because it shows that there was definitely a use of a singular gauntlet. And that was very popular at the time. Um, so there's three images that I'm going to show and each one is slightly different except the last two have a lot in similar or a lot in similarity um which I think is kind of important to note those two less so than the first one so the first one you'll notice um this gentleman has what looks like a kind of standard gauntlet of the kind of 15th century um full single arm um, and is holding a uh, what appears to be some sort of javelin or dart um, in the other hand now this one um, I think is quite interesting just from the perspective that he's wearing just a singular um, piece of armour just on the one arm and nothing else. So it definitely shows that there is a um, kind of a bias towards this style of armour um, especially earlier on because this is definitely an earlier style of armour that you wouldn't expect to see later into the 16th and 17th century. Now, in these other two pictures, that's when we start to see a very particular style of gauntlet being used. Um, and this next image is one that I've shown multiple times, but I think it's probably the most fascinating because it shows what appears to be the gauntlet in use. So the term parry gauntlet is just something that I've um, taken to using. Um, and mainly it's just, and this is purely my conjecture on the subject, how I think that these were used. So before I go any further with these other two images, I'd just like to kind of touch on what exactly a paragon that is. So in the 16th and 17th century, you had what were called paragon that's, um, there's very little information on these. Um, but there's a few images I did manage to find, some of the Royal Armouries in England and one or two through auction houses. Now, um, I'm going to show one example and you actually see it in a close up, some very interesting details. So these were primarily just worn on the left arm. Um, and from the descriptions I've found were primarily used by people fencing with rapiers. Um, whether this was for battlefield or just for training, I'm not too sure, but really from the way that they're set up, it seems more than likely that these were specifically designed for um, you know, battlefield or perhaps dueling use, um, but they were in time, inclined for life or death situations. Now you will see in the close-up of this gun that there's actually uh, what appears to be chainmail on the um, palm of the hand itself. So it makes you, it kind of makes sense with anyone who's ever seen rapier fencing. There's a lot of thrusts and parries with the, the backhand itself. And if you imagine you miss um, a thrust with your lead hand, you have your backhand here to move things out of the way if someone's thrusting your chest, face, whatever. Um, interestingly, the palm being armored kind of obviously gives you the idea that there was grabbing at the blade going on and obviously parrying the blade and trying to catch hold of it as well. Um, and you can even see on this particular gauntlet itself that there's actual uh, cut marks in there on the cuff. So these are definitely used um, and used to defend uh, oneself. So a lot of people ask, why don't I just simply go buy an off-the-shelf kind of gauntlet from um, some of the, the armor makers that are out there? And the thing is, these two later examples that we see... Um, to me are the ones that have kind of fascinated me the most, mainly because these are something that we still see in much later periods. And that is this singular type with an extended um, elbow piece. So a lot of earlier gauntlets had a separate piece for the elbow itself, basically to articulate the elbow so that you can move it. These ones, however, just continue straight up and some cup around the elbow. Um, so I'll show you this first image and you'll know, this is very interesting because this is an image I've brought up um, numerous different times and you'll see in this image that the one gentleman is reaching forward with his gauntlet to stop the uh, aggressor with the, the skin or the, the Irish fighting knife 
Um, and one interesting thing you'll see was the fellow with the skin, and this is a, an example I've done a, a review video on from Todd Cutler. But he's holding it in this very particular grip with his um, index finger on top, and he's holding it in this position, thrusting downwards. And the other gentleman's reaching forward with his left hand. Um, and you can see here a very particular um, setup for the gauntlet itself. Um, there's not, no elbow with it, it's just one singular piece with a piece that extends out over the elbow and perhaps even kind of might cuff over it, it's hard to see. So this one's very interesting, um, and this image itself is very interesting, there's a lot of really interesting pieces to this. You can see the hat that this gentleman's wearing, which is one actually commissioned. Again, I have a separate video on that. But this is a very particular style of gauntlet, um, and it's not one that you really see until later periods. And you actually see this a hell of a lot in the English Civil War. And you see this worn by English cavalry during the English Civil War. I got to work up a few images of that because I think these are very fascinating to give you an idea of where perhaps these came from, or at least where the idea came from, um, and kind of the idea behind it. Um, and you'll see a lot of different images of English cavalry wearing these. Um, and one of the things you'll see is that the this was mainly intended for the left hand, and the right hand was to be free for use with a sword. The idea behind that was that the left hand was primarily going to be holding onto the reins and was kind of stationary. So it made sense for this arm to be the heavily armored one and the one to defend yourself with. And um, you'll interestingly see this example with actual uh, heavy kind of scale uh, buff coat, which is basically like reinforced leather coat, um, reinforced sleeve for the upper arm. Um, and you can see how similar these later versions are to the artwork that we see of the Irish Kearns. And this is kind of what I'm talking about, is that I'm not looking to get a off-the-shelf gauntlet. These seem to be a very specific thing. Um, and that's kind of why I go with the term parry gauntlet when I refer to these, because it's the only thing that I can see in history around the period that seems to kind of mirror what these are. They don't just seem to be a gauntlet on the left arm and people just ditch the other one. They seem to be a very specific item and with an intended purpose. The unfortunate thing with most Irish history is that we don't really have a good overview of how these were used, why these were used, and where these came from, and why they are what they are. We can just kind of guess through artwork. Um, but that's what leads me on to this next image. And this final one I think is probably the most fascinating because it actually gives us the best image of the gauntlet itself. And this is one where I didn't actually notice this gauntlet for quite a while, even though I've looked at this image over and over and over. And it wasn't until someone pointed out, and the main thing being that it's dangling off of a, a large um, rope or cord and almost uh, down by the guy's shin. Um, and this is something that seems to be really unique to the current. That most of their equipment was either carried or uh, hung around the neck from quite a long uh, cord. Like you'll see that this gentleman's carrying his sword, and um, he's not doesn't have it in a scabbard or a sword frog or anything like that. He's actually carrying it in his hand. And you'll also notice that his left hand, um, sorry, he notices, yeah, his left hand in the picture is holding the knife in that upturned manner with the, the thumb on top. Which, the scheme being the scheme, if anyone's seen my video on it, they have a very, very thick spine. Like you probably see here if I can get the light to shine on it. You see how thick that is. That would stop a uh, sword impact on it if you had to. Obviously, you're probably not going to use that out, but it's a, it's a very thick, stout blade. All of the surviving examples are the very thick, heavy blades um, with very thick cross-section on them. And it makes sense to use something like that along the forearm. You see how long this is. It actually goes, I'm six, five, and this blade being what it is, you see it goes well past my forearm. So if I was to block a blade in an emergency situation, that this would keep me safe. Um, and that is a very interesting thing because you do see this in later artwork. And I'll touch on that in a moment, but the interesting thing you see with this gauntlet is that this gauntlet on this gentleman really does appear to be um, like those English Civil War cavalry gauntlets. You can see from the, it's the inside version of it. It's a single piece um, with a hinge clo closure on it with a cuff extending over past the elbow and kind of cupping over the elbow itself. So this really leads me to believe that these were very similar to these 
um, cavalry gauntlets slash pairing gauntlets. Like it very much seems to me this was a specific style of gauntlet in favour amongst the Irish at the time. Now we do have earlier reference images to Irish um, McCurrens using the Targe or the shield and have this wonderful example made by um, Alba Targes. And this one you'll see, this is kind of where I think this is just an, an elongated version of the same idea. <laughs> Probably butchering that. But the idea that you have essentially a free hand inside to do things with. You can still hold your skin in that um, manner should you wish to with the index finger on top or simply just grasp it in this version and have your piece sticking at the end. However, obviously a little bit more cumbersome and a little bit more difficult to carry around and keep in good nick. Um, whereas a gauntlet you can simply wear or, as you see in the image, literally hang it around your neck. Um, so I think this is a really interesting piece of kit and something that I would really love to get. So. This is kind of my public announcement, but if anyone knows of any armorers who could make something like this, um, or knows of anyone who kind of specializes in the area, be it like English Civil War armor, anything like that, please do let me know. I would love to get one commissioned and test it out. Um, I don't want one as a showpiece. I would actually like to use this for uh, HEMA sparring with swords to actually test and see what they like to use. So if anyone has any recommendations, please do pop um, them down below in the, in the comments. So one final thing I wanted to touch on is this image. So you'll see in this image we have two gentlemen, um, and this is a uh, much later um, than when we'd expect to see the current on the battlefield, but this is a treatise from Lieutenant William Pringle Green. Um, and this is the instructions for, uh, for training a ship's crew the use of arms in attack and defense. And basically you'll see one gentleman here blocking his head with a very similar sort of grip with his arm in this kind of similar upturned grip, defending his head and using his opposite arm to swing a sword. Not saying that this is a direct um, lineage or anything like that. I'm just saying it's a very interesting image of how potentially the skin was intended to be used in this manner. That potentially, from how we see it used continuously like that, with that upturned grip and that downward point, um, with this particular finger over grip, or you know, with the index finger, with the preference amongst the Irish to wear these um, pairing gauntlets, that perhaps this had some sort of um, ongoing use, that there was a, the idea that the left hand was pairing, the right hand was for um, using a sword. Again, just conjecture on my part, it's just things that we see pop up in artwork, um, but obviously something I would love to test out, and something that uh, if I could get myself hold of one of these gauntlets, I would love to test and do some videos for you guys. Um, and on that note, if anyone would like to sponsor my work, I do have a Patreon. You will find the links to that in the description. Um, and of course, the artist I mentioned at the beginning of Slutty Doodles, I will link his Instagram in the comments. So, or big part in the video description. So please do check out his work. It's wonderful. Tell him I sent you. Um, convince him to start making prints. I really want to get some for my studio here. I'd love to get some. His artwork's amazing. Um, doesn't currently make them, but I'd really love to get some prints of his work. Um, and if you guys have any thoughts on that, if you guys have any other sources, anything that you could think of, um, and obviously any armors you could think of who could do that sort of work, please do let me know. I would really love to um, kind of learn more on this topic and kind of explore it a bit more. Like I said, this is a term I've kind of coined because it just seems to be the most fitting for it. Is it correct? I don't know. I'm not a um, trained academic in the field. This is just my own research and things that I've kind of put together through research in this topic. But it is one that I find fascinating and it is one that I would love to dive into more. So if you've enjoyed that video, please do give us a like, a comment and a subscribe. All of those things massively help. And just thank you. Thank you to everyone for the support. It really does mean a lot. A lot of fun stuff coming this year. Um, a few little delays with some of the things I was intending to do. That's the way with life. Um, I will be getting some really interesting and fun videos over the next um, few months. So I will get those around to you. Um, obviously shorter days in winter here makes doing certain things a little bit harder, but I'll get them done eventually. Once again, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it and slon.